Hello everybody, it's Haku here and in today's video I will be teaching you how to level up quickly in Dragon Quest XI Echoes of an Elusive Age. This is the definitive edition S version on the Nintendo Switch, and seeing how this version will soon be, if not yet already, available on PS4, Xbox One, and PC, I think the time is right to revisit this game and make a guide. So before we actually get into the tutorial, there are some things that need to be made perfectly clear. 1. This method is not an original method. I did not figure this out on my own. 2. I got this method from a YouTuber called Overture. I'll put a screen cap of his YouTube channel and link it in the description as well, together with his original video. Please subscribe to him. 3. The idea to use the Dirge of Dundraso pet power was something I got from a YouTube user who commented on O. Richard's video. His name is Leandro Souza. I'll put a screenshot up. So again, full disclaimer, this method is not original or unique to me. All I did was take what I thought was the best way to level up in the game, include an optional but very useful missing piece, and make a guide with voiceover. So with all of that out of the way, let's get started with the tutorial. So prerequisites for this guide is first, you need to be in the post game, or act 3. That's your spoiler warning right there. You're also going to be needing the following skills and pet powers. Let's start with hero. The first skill is not really a prerequisite, but it will be useful to have. Not mandatory to this guide, but adds quality of life. That skill is Kazing, in case you get one-shotted by whack. First, the real prerequisite is pep up. This will allow you to make Hero enter into a pepped up state at will. This skill is absolute key to making this method easier. You'll be needing this. Next up is Jade. We'll get into the necessary pep powers later. For Jade, you will need either Thunder Thrust or Lightning Thrust. Either one is fine, but if you have both, I would suggest the use of Lightning Thrust over Thunder Thrust, because Lightning Thrust has a higher chance of actually landing the hit. If you only have Thunder Thrust, it's fine. That should suffice. Your goal will be achieved either way. Next up is Eric. For Eric, the only skill you will need is Critical Claim. Unlike Jade's Thunder and Lightning Thrust, Eric's Critical Claim is a 100% guaranteed critical hit. This is an extremely crucial skill to making this method work. Next up is Selvando. Nothing too crazy here, just accelerate. You should already have this. I'll explain why you need it later. Last one is Rab. Again, this is optional, but it will be super handy for him and Hero to have Kazin. That's it for the skills. Let's take a look at the pet powers you will need. First pet power is Hallelujah. This is the first pet power you will be casting. It will boost the amount of experience points and gold that you will receive. And it also guarantees item drops. Second is Electrolyte. This is the second one you will cast. It will turn whatever monsters that are still in the field into metal slimes if it succeeds. Rest assured though that it succeeds most of the time. Finally, the third and final pet power you will need is Dirge of Dungeso. As stated in its description, it can even send metal monsters to sleep. This will be super useful in ensuring that those little buggers don't run away, wasting your efforts. And that's all you need. Once you have those, you're ready to go. You don't need Hendrik, Veronica, or Serena for this to work, but they will also be able to reap the benefits from this method. Now, let's head off to the location where you will be grinding. Alright, first, head out wherever you are and summon Cetacea. Your destination is the Mango Grove Railway Station. The only way to access this area is through Cetacea. Right here. Okay, so once there, first order of business is to get Jade, Eric, Silvando, and Rab pepped. Eric is already pepped up for me, so let's check our lineup and swap him out for Rab, saving Eric's pep state for later. Again, Hero can pop up anytime, so you don't have to worry about him. So once you're there, you're gonna wanna avoid those headless guys right there. 
You're gonna wanna look for the malicious muddy hands. They'll pop out of the ground. Right here. Alright, first encounter. What we're looking for is not here. So if this happens to you, just wipe them out and look for another malicious muddy hand. Score one for the good guys! <laughs> okay, so after getting rid of those guys, we wanna look for another malicious muddy hand. Encounter number two, still a no-go. Wipe them out and continue searching. Alright, encounter number three and we finally got it to spawn. This anything. is the hardy hand. This is the monster that we're looking for. Preferably, we would want Eric to be immediately out in the field. In my case, he was already pepped up, so I'll just swap I him. Got your back. In your case, he may already be out. <laughs> See? That's what I'm talking about. That's where Kazing comes in. You're gonna want to use critical claim on the hardy hand before it runs away. Then revive any fallen party member if applicable. In my case, I'm swapping Eric out for Rab because Jade isn't pepped up yet. You will need to have Hero, Jade, and Eric pepped up to use Hallelujah. Next, you're gonna want to keep defending until they pep up. Whenever the hand spawns back up, just get rid of them. You're gonna want to keep at least one hand out on the field for the entire time. Again, keep defending until the required members step up. Heal whenever you have to. This is a process that feels long and requires a lot of patience. But you will be handsomely rewarded for your troubles. I promise you this is the fastest way to level up. I am aware that you can use pep pops and pep pips for instant pep power, but those things don't come cheap, so I don't recommend going that route. Unless, you know, you're loaded. For this encounter, I'll let the entire thing play out without any cuts so you can get a feel for how long you could be doing this on your rent. For the next encounters, I'll shorten them in the interest of time. Again, because Hero can pep up any time, there's no need to swap him out when he does pep up. And if he does, that just makes the process faster and easier. Yeah! 
Alright, Jade's finally pepped up. Remember, Eric needs to be pepped up too. So pep him up if he's not pepped up yet. You won't be able to cast Hallelujah without him. Once you have met all the requirements, cast Hallelujah immediately. So once the battle is over, you should have a boost in experience and gold, and you should also have guaranteed item drops. Alright, so we're not done yet. The waiting game continues. You're still gonna keep one hand out on the field and you're still gonna keep well, killing its Swap Eric out for Rad. We will need Eric again later. Now, you're gonna need to pep up Jade again, Rab, and hmm. Silvando. Alright, now that Silvando is pepped up, swap him out and keep him in that state. I think you should swap him out for Eric just to prepare him for the next encounter. Then, keep defending until the rest pep up. Alright, Rab is pepped up, so swap him out for anyone you don't need, like say, Hendrik. You have my sword. Do your worst. Do your worst. Ah! 
Okay, so Jade is ready. So put Rab and Silvando back on the front lines. Let me at him. Now before you go ham and activate Electrolyte, there's something you need to do first. Take control of Silvando. Once it's Silvando's turn, cast Accelerate on Rab. You'll understand why in a bit. Ha, ha. Go ahead and cast Electrolyte after Rab is accelerated. If you see Metal Slimes, that means Electrolyte was a success. Nice! I got a Metal King Slime! I got super lucky to get this one on the first try. Chances are you might not get one on your first try. More often than not, what you will get are Metal Slimes and Liquid Metal Slimes. But either way, they all give good experience. But farming Metal King Slimes is super preferable. So if you spawn one or two, make the most out of it. The next thing you want to do is cast Dirge of Dungeon Soul. This only requires Rab to be pepped up to you, so don't worry about Hero. Cast the pep power to put the metal monsters to sleep. It's not a 100% guarantee, but it's still a very high chance nonetheless. Okay, so we missed two, but at the very least, we got the Metal King slot. So that's why Dirge of Dungeon Soul is so important. If you don't put them to sleep, they can run away on their first turn, wasting your time and your effort. Let's get Eric in there, just in case Jade misses her attack. Here goes nothing. But since the enemy is asleep, Jade should have a higher chance of connecting. So one Metal King Slime and a Hardy Hand gave me over 400,000 XP and over 9,000 gold. So we gained 3 levels, 81 to 84. If we had killed the Liquid Metal Slimes, we would have gotten more. Not bad. Oh yeah. There's our guaranteed drops. So I'm going to start cutting out footage here, and we're going to try that again. I want to show you just how much you can maximize this method. So let's hope we run into another Metal King slime. Right, this is encounter number 5, so we managed to get Hardy Hand to spawn pretty quickly. Repeat the same process. If you're lucky, Hardy Hand will call for backup. Get rid of them and the end result should be more experience points for you. You're wide open! Ha! All right. Again, I'm going to cut out the waiting game in the interest of time. Cast Hallelujah. <laughs> Cast Accelerate on Rad. Accelerate! 
cast Electrolyte. I won't be cutting this out. You'll see why in a bit. I can't wait! So if Electrolyte fails, it summons the A3 G15 oh, no. monsters. They don't give anywhere near the same amount of experience points as Metal Slimes, but they still drop something very valuable. So you want to encounter them at least once. So what do you want to do now is just get rid of them. Here we go! Go! So there is about 300,000 points difference between one Metal King Slime and three of those. Hmm. Things are looking up. How's life for the old dog yet? This is the drop I was referring to, the Sword of Judgment. It's a strong sword and you can get one, two, or three of them from these monsters. Okay, this is encounter number six, so we are very lucky to run into another one straight away. Repeat the same process. Okay, we are very lucky to get another Metal King Slime. Now let's try to make that Dirge of Dundrasil work properly. Okay, let's hope this works on all of them. Jackpot! Now, all you gotta do is just get rid of them. I got you back! So this should give us a lot of experience. For now, defend, don't try to wake him up. Take out the big guy first with critical claim. Again, just defend. Don't risk using a normal yeah! attack, waking it up. Okay, let's see how much experience points we're getting from this. We win again. So that's over 700,000 experience points and over 11,000 gold coins. That's about as high as it can get. That is, of course, unless you can get Electrolyte to spawn three Metal King Slimes. You'd be raking it in. I leveled up six times, from 85 to 91. So you can easily get to level 99 using this method. Not bad. Ho ho! I'm fitter than ever!
So once you're satisfied, just zoom somewhere you're comfortable with and save your game. So we went from level 80 to level 91 in less than an hour. So before I end this video, I just want to explain why you would want to grind to level 99 in the post game before doing your side quests. Aside from the fact that you'll be crazy strong, I think the number one benefit is being able to easily get a perfect score when using the fun size forge. The higher your level, the easier it is to use the fun size forge. That means you'll be getting perfect plus 3 weapons and armor. And equipment matters in this game. If you're at a low level and you are trying to forge a high level sword, you're gonna have a hard time buddy. You're not gonna be happy with the results. So I suggest you level yourself first before you forge any of those things so that you don't have to waste your perfectionist pearls. With that being said, I hope you liked this guide. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was insightful. And uh, I hope you get to level 99 in less than, I don't know, six hours. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you liked what you saw, please leave a like and consider subscribing for more gaming content. Till then, see you in the next video. Peace.